Hello again and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. And if you are not, welcome back. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you have not done so already, because it's a free way that you can help me out. This is the case of Katarzyna Zuwada from Krakow in Poland. Katarzyna Zuwada, lovingly known as Kasia, was born on 1 June 1975 in Krakow in Poland. She loved science fiction books, she loved listening to classical music and she was a huge Grateful Dead fan. Her father was her absolute best friend and she told him just about everything. She was described as a very nice person but it was said that she seemed really quiet and withdrawn. In 1996, while she and her father were out for a hike, her father had slipped and fell and suffered a severe spinal injury. And after a while, he suffered more illnesses and sadly, he passed away. Katarzyna was struck with guilt and felt responsible for her father's death. This led to her becoming severely depressed and turning into someone that became a loner and someone who didn't really speak to anyone. Katarzyna had been living with her mother, who had become increasingly worried about her, and after she tried to take her own life, her mother had felt like she needed psychological help. Her mother arranged for her to start attending therapy sessions in Nova Huta, and her mom had even attended some of these sessions with her. In 1998, Kasia was 23, and she was studying religion at Jagiellonian University. At first, she was not sure which path she wanted to follow, so she decided to study psychology. But it's a very tough course, and after only one semester, she decided to change the field she wanted to go in. She then thought that perhaps she wanted to major in history, but that was also not for her. And by her third semester, she settled on religious studies. On 12 November 1998, Katarzyna was due to meet her mother at the psychiatric clinic where she was attending her therapy sessions. But she never made it to the appointment, which was not like her at all. Her mom began to panic and started contacting her friends and acquaintances, wanting to find out whether they might have seen her. No one had seen her for a few days actually, and no one had any idea where she might be. Her mom was extremely worried and went to the police station to file a missing persons report. She explained to them that Katarzyna did not show up for her scheduled therapy session, and the police assumed that she might have just run off or that she might have perhaps ended things and decided that it wouldn't be worth their time to start searching for her. They told her that she should wait and see if she would return. How many cases do we come across where this exact thing happens? On the 6th of January 1999, the crew of a pusher tugboat called the Alk were making their way down the Vistula River when suddenly their propeller stopped turning. The captain thought that it was probably a branch or some vegetation that got stuck in there and sent someone to go and have a look. When they opened the hatch, they smelled an extremely foul smell that smelled like something that was decomposing. They pulled the item that was jammed in the propeller out and at first wondered what it was. It was pale, rubbery and almost looked like a sack of some sort. When they turned it around, they could clearly see a human ear and what looked like the breasts of a woman. The man immediately dropped the item as soon as he noticed that he was holding human skin. The captain immediately phoned the police and when they came to the conclusion that it was in fact human skin, they immediately started searching the river to try and find other remains. The skin was sent for testing and before they got the results on the 14th of January, a right leg was also recovered from the river. The leg was also sent for DNA testing and both items, if you want to call them that, came back as that of the missing Katarzyna Zoara. Initially it was thought that Katarzyna might have ended up in the river somehow and that her body had been destroyed by a propeller. However, when a further examination was done on the skin and the leg, it was found that the skin was removed from the torso with precision. 
and that the limbs and the head were cut off on purpose with clear and precise cuts. The skin suit was cut away at the thighs and neck, reaching up as far as the left ear without the face and arms. It also had an opening flap on the one side and the nipples were cut off. The skin was prepared in such a way as to create a kind of bodysuit that the murderer was more than likely wearing. The coroner determined that the body had been in the water for about two to three weeks by the time that it was recovered. Pieces of Katagina's jeans, sweater and flannel shirt were also found and the flannel had a square cut out of it. Up to date, no other remains of Katagina had ever been found. Police had no idea what they were dealing with and at first they thought that they might be dealing with a copycat, a la Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs, since it had been such a popular movie in the 90s. The Polish police brought in experts from the FBI as well as some of the world's best cold case detectives in order to try and catch the perpetrator. The profile is determined that whoever killed Katarzyna must have been about the same size as she was since they were able to wear her skin like an outfit, that they were very intelligent and that they might be a butcher, hunter or someone with medical knowledge of the human body. Upon further investigation into Kasia's life, it was found that about a month or so before her death, she had become more conscious of her appearance and had made efforts to try and lose weight. She had also changed her hair from black to blonde and it was also found that she had skipped classes for over two weeks. This made police think that perhaps she had met someone and they started looking into it, but her friends only knew of one male that she hung out with, a fellow Grateful Dead fan that she bought records and CDs from, but he was cleared pretty soon as he had a rock solid alibi. The profilers also figured that it might be only the first of several killings. And indeed, a next murder was not too far off. On 31 May 1999, the Krakow police received a phone call from an elderly man saying that there had been a murder at his son's house in a tiny village near the city. And he told police that he felt that his grandson had been the murderer. Now, let me give you a trigger warning because we are going to get into some rather graphic descriptions. When the police arrived to the house, they found a body hanging upside down from the ceiling in the basement. The victim was the son of the man who had phoned the police and the killer was in fact his grandson Vladimir, who was originally from Russia. It was found that he lured his father into the basement and at first he tried in vain to electrocute him with a stun gun. When that didn't work, he stabbed him with a screwdriver several times. He then hung him upside down, decapitated him and bled him out. He then took the head back to his room and started removing the skin from it and threw the head somewhere in the garden. Using a needle and thread, he sutured together the skin and soft tissue from the head and neck and dried it out with salt to prevent it from putrefying. He then put this mask he made out of his dad's skin on his head put on his father's clothes, hat, glasses and scarf and went out to a bench where his father was set to meet up with his granddad. His granddad could not see all that well, which Vladimir took advantage of. So he sat down on the bench and started speaking to his grandfather, pretending to be his father. After a while, his grandfather noticed that it didn't quite sound like his son's voice and he got suspicious, because to him it sounded more like his grandson. But he didn't want to say anything, and after they finished their meeting, he decided that he would go to the house to check whether anything was wrong. He couldn't find his son anywhere in the house, and when he went to the basement, he sadly found his son's headless body hanging from the ceiling. He immediately went to the neighbor's house to phone the police, to report the crime. Vladimir soon realized that his grandfather had reported him and he fled the house. He hid his father's clothing nearby 
and then went to a bus stop to wait for a bus, where he was found and arrested. In his interrogation, he told the investigators that the murder was meant to be a work of art, illustrating extreme human meanness. He told them that it was a revenge killing, due to the hatred that he had filed towards his father, who cheated on his wife in Russia and left her with nothing when he left both him and her and went back to Poland. He admitted to the murder and told them all the gruesome details, but maintained throughout several interrogations that he had no idea who Katarzyna Zuara was. There was also no evidence that pointed them toward him being responsible for Katarzyna's murder, or even having any contact with her whatsoever. The strange thing here, apart from the completely effed up person he was, and the even more effed up way that he murdered his father, was that he attended the same university as Katarzyna, and also studied psychology, albeit they were never in the same class, as he started the course in 1992, and she started in 1993, and then dropped out after her first semester. Also, there has only been three cases of human skinning reported in Krakow, and then two of those happened at the same time. What are the chances? That's just wild. Vladimir was sentenced to 25 years and was extradited by his request to his home country of Russia to serve his sentence there. And pretty soon afterwards, Katarzyna's case went cold. The Polish police unit called the X-Files were also drafted in on the case and in 2012 they exhumed Katarzyna's body to see where the new technologies available could help them find any new evidence or point to any new leads or possible suspects. The 3D Expertise Laboratory of the Department of Forensic Medicine of the Wrocław University were then able to create a 3D model of the injuries that had been inflicted on her. And what they found was quite horrific. They found that before her death, the attacker had chained her up due to some ligature marks that they had found on her ankle. And they also found that she had been beaten, severely, and that he had used a sharp tool to wound her on her neck, her armpits and her groin area. And that he had also used a heavy object to shatter her pelvic area. This was done to inflict pain on her as a form of torture, and eventually she bled to death. It was also found that some of the beating injuries that had been caused to her might have been done by someone that was familiar with martial arts. They also found plant material on her clothing recovered from the vistula that was rare and belonged to a specific area of the river. This helped them narrow down the area where Cassia might have been dumped into the river and they narrowed down the area of the search for the killer. But there was still no luck in finding the perp. 19 years after Katarzyna's disappearance, police received a letter from a colleague of a man by the name of Robert Janczewski. In the letter, he told police that Robert had been rather obsessed with Katarzyna's murder and that he often visited her grave. It was also explained in the letter that he didn't live far from the river where she was found. As it turns out, Robert had actually been on the police's radar since the year 2000, as surveillance they put up at Katarzyna's grave showed him visiting her grave often, but they had no other evidence to try and pursue him as a suspect any further. Robert, who was 52 at the time, was called a freak and a weirdo by people that knew him. He was trained in martial arts, was known to harm animals when he was younger, and had a history of harassing women. There was even one report of him watching one of his neighbors with binoculars through her window and she had to end up putting blinds up. He joined the army when he was younger and also worked in the morgue of a military hospital where of course you would learn quite a lot about the human anatomy and dissecting someone, right? After leaving the military, he worked at the Krakow Institute of Zoology where he would help with the skinning and preparation of animal skins. 
He was, however, fired from this job, when one day, just suddenly, he killed all the Institute's rabbits during his shift, and couldn't or wouldn't explain his actions. When he was brought in for questioning, he denied killing Kasia, and denied that he even knew who she was. But it was obvious that he was lying, since they knew he visited her grave on multiple occasions, so obviously he knew who she was. It was also stated in some reports that blood was found in his bathroom and the bath and the bath frame were removed for testing. But it has never been confirmed whether the blood that they found was matched to Katagina. But Robert was arrested on suspicion of murder and eventually he was charged with aggravated murder with particular cruelty and he was kept in detention while more evidence against him was gathered. All of the evidence and information close to this case is very closely guarded, but the fact that he was charged and has remained in jail since 2017 must mean that they do have some sort of something that points to him being responsible for her death, right? As of January 2023, his trial has not taken place. But he is still in custody and investigators have requested a closed trial. So that is all that I have for the case today. Let me know your thoughts, theories and opinions down below. If you have gotten so far, I do really appreciate your support so very much. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Until next time, stay safe out there, take care of yourself and take care of each other. Bye.